All right, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two of this best of three set between Mineski and BNB. Mineski took the first matchup in this best of three pretty convincingly. They had some pretty good ravages by Winter, and that Jacko Phantom Lancer got absolutely out of control, did very well on that mid lane. So we'll see if we can see more of the same from him. And we'll also see if BNB can get back into this one. I'm Pythian, I'll be bringing this match to you on Dota TV Ten and Twitch.tv. So we're going to get right into the draft here. Five seconds as Mineski have already banned out the Faceless Void. And, well, BNB, they're going to take out the Dyer Chen. Team it was a bit of a problem in the last match. Interesting that Faceless Void is the first ban from... Each team here, last last time it was BNB that banned it out. This time it's Mineski that bans out the, the Void. Remaining. That's usually not a hero that you see banned out Five in many other uh, Dota scenes. But here, in this match at least, Reserve it got time. banned out first phase in both matches. <laughs> and the OD is also going to get banned out by Mineski. Again, a strong hero. Very difficult to play against sometimes. And Jacko... I guess doesn't really want to see that happening in the mid lane at all. Ten seconds remaining. Daylight is starting to creep in through my window. Five it's currently seven oh eight in the morning. For Reserve me at time. least. I'm sure it's much later for other people, especially these players. Gotta be Close to very late at night for them. It was a bit surprising for me to hear that the games were starting so late for them. Usually, for SEA, games are going to start about, I would say, midnight my time. That's how they were during Shanghai qualifiers. But these were five or six hours later. It's pretty interesting. So we're still going through the ban phase here. Last match, Winter did really well with the Tidehunter. He went drums Dyer and team. then a Blink Dagger. And even without the Blink Dagger, he was still able to get two or three man ravages and just really split up the fight. I think that's the main the main benefit of a Tidehunter or an, an Enigma or a, t a Faceless Void. Rage you can really just split up the fight and you also have the Queen of Pain comboing with the Tidehunter a lot to get the big Ravage and then Sonic Wave combos. Mineski X will get the Nature's Prophet this time. It was banned out in the last match, and this time they pick it up first. And we'll see what the rating decide to respond with. Radiant Team Pick. The Invoker is going to be the pickup here from BNB. It was played by them in the last match, and it did screw Ten up a lot remaining. for Mineski. It forced them back in a lot of cases, but in the end, it really Five wasn't enough to remaining. secure them the match, and the Tidehunter is also going to be Dyer picked team. up by BNB. Just maybe they wanted to show Mineski that they can play the hero too. Maybe show Winner what's up. They are going to pick that Tidehunter, and like we said, it splits up the fight. It can combo pretty well with the Invoker throughout the Tornado, and then also get that big Ravage. So it's a, a pretty strong combo here for the Radiant. And Mineski, I'm sure they know how to deal with this. And we'll see what they're able to do against it. Reserve time. Dire team back. I could probably turn the volume up on the on my client a little bit. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I think that's fine. Five Actually, it might remaining. be a little bit low. 
possibly. Reserve time. Hmm. Oh, just kidding. I'm not low at all. It's just my headphones. Radiant team ban. There you go. Might be a little bit louder now, though. In any case, we are in the second phase of banning right now with the Witch Doctor being taken out Ten by remaining. Mineski. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> we Diet haven't really talked about back. Vengeful Spirit a whole lot. I mean, she was pretty strong in the last match, got some very good swaps, and with the Aether Lens just gets a longer Radiant range on the swaps, as well as eventually ended up getting a kill or two with the Wave of Terror, <laughs> which is a very low damage spell, but highly Radiant effective with some minus armor. But it's always a good feeling when you can get a kill with that spell. <laughs> you're really not supposed to. Even though it does... Let's see how much damage it does. It does 90 damage at level 4. That's pretty much nothing. But if you can get a kill with it, it's, it's really awesome. It is difficult, though. The Sven is going to get banned out by Mineski. And the, again, Ursa and Drow. That's very similar phase 2 bans Five to game number remaining. 1. Where the fa the the Sven, the Drow, and the Orsa were all banned out. Reserve time. Now we'll see some more picks from the players. I'm really interested to see what Jacko plays this time. I always love seeing those mid players that really have no fear when it comes to who they play. I mean, going Phantom Lancer mid is that that takes some balls, especially against an Invoker. You would expect the Invoker to dominate that matchup, but with the the Phantom Lancer's high base damage and a bit of survivability with the Doppelganger and the big nuke damage of the Phantom Lance, I mean, that that lane turned into a pretty good matchup for the for Dia Jacko. Team pick. And the Invoker, Benda. Taking a bit of time on the picks here. That's all right. We'd like them to Ten think about their heroes quite remaining. a bit. This is the second match in, or second game in the best Five of three in the round of 16. And this round will be the last one that they're playing Templar today. So we may assassin. find another match after this one. Radiant team pick. But Mineski or the other team will not be playing any further in the tournament today. The round of eight or the quarterfinals will happen tomorrow. Night Stalker. Talked about it a little bit in the first Dia match. The Templar pick. Assassin is going to be the pickup here for Mineski. I really like what Mineski did with their draft last time. They picked the Phantom Lancer a little bit early. Mirana. And then they end up going for the Queen of Pain. Radiant so it's almost bad. like B&B &B just don't know where they're going to go with this pickup. And the Templar Assassin could go either to the safe lane or to the mid lane with... Jacko. I mean, you never know. Ten seconds remaining. The Night Stalker Five gets picked up by BNB. It's a tanky hero. I don't see a whole lot of countering Reserve to the Templar time. Assassin right now. Remaining. Although the silence could Dire help out a little bit, back. as well as the silence against the Marana. Radiant team pick. It could be a good pickup. It it would take a lot to take down this Night Stalker. And we'll see how it ends up happening. The Clinks and the, the Ember Spirit will be the next band out. Mineski you think that, well, Spitzer. Clinks is kind of, could be Dia a safe lane carry, pick. could be a mid laner in certain situations. The Spectre would be the last pickup by B&B. &B. They want to take it late. And they could do that, 
last match, Maneski found it a little bit difficult to push up through high ground. And they could find more of the same this time, although they do have that Nature's Prophet, which is pretty good at pushing the lanes out and taking some racks when the other team is trying to do Ten something else on the map. Remaining. Five but that Spectre pickup remaining. takes us to the last pick here from Mineski. Reserve time. And I have really no idea what they're going to go here because last time it was the Queen of Pain and you would generally think that goes mid but they took it to the safe lane. They had Ketsik play that. So we will see. Because we have the same sort of situation. We have a Templar Assassin who could be played as the mid or the carry. And without a whole lot of info on, on what the players generally play, and that's the that's the best guess I can make. It is going to be the Juggernaut, so I would Yep. So it's going to be a safe lane juggernaut and a mid lane Templar Assassin. There's not a whole lot to do with the refraction charges right now unless the Spectre were to get a Radiance. In any case, the player is going to choose it here. We're going to get right into this game two of the best of three set between a Mineski and BNB with Mineski already being up one game to zero in the round of 16 of the Epicenter Dota 2 Tournament SEA Qualifier. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. All right, we're going to get right into this match here between Mineski and BNB. Let's introduce our teams here for here for Prepare BNB. We've got that. lights on the Tide Hunter this time. Night nice Stalker is going to be handled by Radio Rays. The Invoker we play by Benda again with that set. Nice little courier right there. Spica is going to be on the lion. And finally, Spectre going to be going towards the bottom lane. It's going to be handled by Eden. Was on the gyrocopter last match. Now, this time for Minesk, we've got Jacko on the Templar Assassin heading towards that mid lane. We've got ADTR on the Marana. Extinct will be handling the Vengeful Spirit. We've got a Winter Nature's Prophet. And finally, on the Juggernaut, we've got Kessick. Is going to be handling that one with the pink sword. Lots of advanced positions here for Mineski as they're getting the deep wards down. Thirty seconds to They're going to have vision of these ancients as well as the tide hunter trying to farm up the the hard camp right there, and they could surround him. He's not skilled anything just yet. He's going to get stuck in here. He gets stunned, arrow to the face. And this Tidehunter, that's going to be your first blood. Generally not who you see give up the first blood is X-Ting. X-Ting takes the last hit right there. The battle begins. So they get the first blood right there and Jacko gets the rune. And they give the bottom rune over to the invoker. So there again is the body block by the Marana. Creative Lock gives the the Templar Assassin advantage in this lane, gets the first last hit. Always nice. As well as an e early healing pot from the courier. Denied. So Templar Assassin doing a little bit of work here in the mid lane. Gonna get those refraction charges up as well as the first point into the side blades. Arrow comes through, not gonna hit. And Extinct right now doing a lot of work against the Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter with the the anchor smash, not all really worried here. And Winter doesn't really have the same problems that he did in the. Well, the Nature's Prophet doesn't have the same problems that we saw earlier. Meanwhile, on the top lane we've got Lights getting stunned and Arrow hits, and this is Tide Hunter once again going down. Juggernaut takes him out this time, and that's two kills already on your off lane Tide Hunter. Not a good start for him.
Winter's going to be hanging out here on the bottom lane, doing some last hitting action. And we already have a pause. So we have very similar kind of lineup. B and B really just want to take it late so their Spectre can be more effective. And Mineski with the Nature's Prophet definitely have their sights on on ending this game rather early. Arrow gonna come through, not gonna hit Benda, and the Marana's just gonna sit on the rune. Actually, Invoker didn't want to go for that one, even though the arrow had already missed. I guess he was a bit afraid of Jacko, but didn't really have to worry about that too much. The Night Stalker finds a bounty rune and may go over to this bo this uh, bottom lane. Oh my gosh, that's so loud. Uh, the courier actually goes down for the radiant, and that was the Invoker. Rather the Marana, but the Illusion Room is just taking it out. Denied. So the Invoker loses his courier. It's going to be a cold snap on the Templar Assassin. The Marana doesn't quite have enough mana for an arrow here. And Winter stays alive, avoids the gank on the bottom lane. And they also get a nice courier kill. Already level 3. He's pretty actually level 4 right now. So a full level ahead of the Spectre. Doing very well on the experience here. They haven't really done a whole lot to contest him. And he's already 11 for 2. It's pretty good for an off lane. And he's just using the trains to harass out the lion. Mineski looking pretty good at the beginning of this match. Already have the 2 kills as well as the courier kill. And yeah, there was nothing on it. Jacko just has that refraction. Gonna get it taken off by the Invoker and the Forged Spirit. There's gonna be the Cold Snap and she's gonna use the the meld. She continues to take damage though through the <laughs> through the ice wall. Winter is going to get hit by that stun. And he's just going to sit here and try to hit the heroes down. He's going for the lion. He's not going for the Spectre. And in the end, he will go down. There's a fairy fire. Oh, these treants, though. They end up taking the kill. Now Spectre's got to try to get out. Meanwhile, on the top lane, we've got just a push coming in. So Winter eventually gets the kill there with a couple of fairy fires being used. Very strong. And this Marana, again, is behind the tower looking for the arrow. Don't think the Invoker knows about it. He may. There's an arrow. Will it hit? Oh, not just yet. They're going pretty far in top. Now here comes the Nature's Prophet onto mid. There's going to be the Strout. He eats a tree. And oh wow, nice dodge of the stun. Marana gets out of that one. And now the Ice Wall comes out. Are they going to be able to take him down? Not just yet. The top tower goes down. And Jackal gets all the refraction shields off of him. And right now, Mineski are just kind of running at at BNB. They don't have to worry about too much. They're using the Nature's Prophet to set up these kills, as well as the Marana. And this Juggernaut already has taken the tower, and will be looking pretty good in the stop lane. Marana looking for an arrow, only level two. Might want to think about getting some XP sometime. Although the arrow, a pretty good spell. Here comes the arrow, and the Tidehunter runs right into it. The Juggernaut has the spin available. He's not using it just yet. There's the, going to be the spin, and now Stan Light's trying to get away. He's actually not going to be able to. So the Juggernaut was trying to see if he could get away with that without using the spin. In the end, he uses it and gets the kill. That's three deaths on the Tidehunter already. And at level four, this game is really not going for well for him at all. Invoker though hasn't died so much this match. They put a lot of their effort onto the Tide Hunter. Give him the old one two. I haven't really heard that too much from Lion, but 
He is apparently going to give them the old one two with that double damage rune. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Why well, getting a double damage rune isn't usually something you see too often. The invoker at level six. He has his ultimate. Just kidding. He has that from the beginning. That was a joke. I made a. I made a funny. The arrow comes through. Not going to hit just yet. And if we take a look at Jacko, he's got a thousand eleven hundred gold, rather, and looking pretty good on the last hits right now. We might as well put the net worth up as the tower has already been taken, and Juggernaut's clearly at the top of that. And Jacko's gonna get close snapped up. There is the dust, and they're gonna go for this one. Oh, Han in into an arrow, and Eden could go down. The sprout gonna be used onto the invoker, and he's just going to cut it down to get out. And now Radio Raise, that's a killing speed for Kessick Imba. And there is there is an Omni Slash. He gets turned into a fish, and he's gotta back up, but Lion does want to be careful. And the arrow comes through, going to not hit onto the lion. Kessick with full mana right now. He also has the healing ward available if he wants to use it. There's only the Templar Assassin going down for two, but the slight gold lead goes to Mineski there. There's a TP in by the Night Stalker. He'll just be running around here. It is still nighttime for a couple more seconds, so he'll be, he'll be running pretty fast. He is going to get scouted out by an Observer Ward. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. And meanwhile on the mid lane, the Juggernaut taking a bit of damage from the Invoker. He has that Omni Slash available. Oh, the Cold Snap does a lot of damage to him. And no, you can't use a spin to avoid an auto attack. He ends up going down there now. Extinct puts a stun as well as the arrow. Invoker in trouble. Does go down to the Nature's Prophet. So they get a return kill there. And this Templar Assassin will be killing off these Ancients. So, Juggernaut goes down for an Invoker, and a little bit of gold to the supports. Marana is now at level 5, looking pretty good, as well as the Vengeful Spirit having that swap up. 3 kills to 7, Mineski with another good start here. And this Juggernaut going for that fast Battle Fury. Jacko's finished up the power treads, and there is a set of drums on the invoker. The smoke comes out from the dire. They're going to head over towards bot, where they could find a specter. The specter could go down here. Has that haunt available? Will she be able to use it? I think she may know. She's going to go off into the trees right now. They spotted her out with that deep observer wear, and now the nature's probably going to TP in right next to the Spectre, who tries to escape to the west. Oh, runs out of that, and the arrow misses. Now the swap back, and there's also the Haunt away underneath the tower. Tidehunter is here. He has a Ravage available, as well as the Arcane Boost. Winter in trouble is going to go down. He got stunned, and now the <coughs> Juggernaut gets absolutely wrecked by that Ravage, but hit on two. And three end up going down in that fight. So a little bit deep there for that Spectre. And, well, Templar Assassin is just going to take this opportunity to go on the mid lane. Meanwhile, we've got the Rana just very far behind in the Radiant Jungle. Ends up going down there. Not the best place for her. So, Templar Assassin is the only one left alive for here for Mineski. And they're letting... They're letting B and B back into this game a little bit. It's a bit on the theme of game one where you had a couple of bad kills that really didn't need to be done. You didn't need to give them up. Happens sometimes, but I still trust that Mineski are doing fairly well in this game. We'll see what Jacko's next item is going to be. So a couple of options here. You can always go for the Desolator, you go for a Blink Dagger. I would be careful with the Blink Dagger, especially against a Ravage and a Spectre going after you.
And Marana seems to be the one going for the mechanism. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. The bottom tower is basically gonna get taken care of. Oh wow, they actually use a fortify for that one late and they waste it. So now that this is probably gonna be another free tower here for the dire, and they also get a Roshan. They will also hit the arrow. Templar Assassin, a very good early Roshan, as well as the Nature's Prophet putting in the Treants. So they take that one and they give it over to the Templar Assassin. The Invoker has finished off the, the Midas. And we shall see where Maneski decide to go th from here. They have a... Since, since the Radiant used that Fortify too late on the last tower, they can have a free one, and Standing Lights could get going on here. He doesn't have a res for 14 more seconds, and he's going to try to TP out. Here comes the arrow. Oh, not going to be in time. So they didn't have any stuns there, and that's going to cost them. As now Juggernaut trying to look for a kill here. He did see the Night Stalker, I believe. And now he could go for the Invoker. Invoker has all of the Wex. Here comes an arrow. Oh, wow. Hits the arrow. And now the Omni Slash is going to get committed to kill off that Invoker. And now they will easily get this Tier 2 tower. But now the Nature's Prophet, he wants something else. He gets the Sprout on the Radio Rays. And uh, then Templar Assassin ensures that he goes down. That's a double kill for him. And now Jacko could be looking for another Lion. Oh, nice haste rune. <laughs> Just misses that arrow. The bottom lane is taking a lot of damage. The mid lane is taking a lot of damage as well. Mid lane goes down. It's going to return the fortify so that they can possibly defend this bottom tower. And now the Tide Hunter moving up. He has that Ravage available. He's going for that mechanism. And the Mineski team don't seem too interested in going for this one, even though they have the Aegis. There is the ultimate getting used. Marana a bit far up. Going to get silenced. And she is in quite a bit of trouble here. She's going to get Spectre ulted on. Leaps away. Also manages to use that ultimate. And the dust is going to miss. Templar Assassin just gets out. And so does the Vengeful Spirit. So, Mineski... Take a get a little bit of wind taken out of their sails there. And if we take a look at the Spectre, 2700 gold, actually very close to a Radiant, should she decide to go for it. We'll see if she Radiant's does. Top tower is under attack. And Jacko has gone for the Blink Dagger first. Goes over to the lane, shows off that Blink Dagger. And we'll probably do, well, can do a little bit of damage to this tower. Yeah, puts down the trap behind the tower to Radiance get some vision of the Night Stalker. Attack. We could have a rotation here on Radiance the mid lane. Nature's Prophet is very far killed. in. He actually gets the courier. Wow. And now extinct. Wow. The arrow somehow hits, but the, the finger takes down the Vengeful Spirit. Now Benda in trouble. He uses the Deafening Blast, but it doesn't hit on the Templar Assassin, which was the main one there. Now Vengeful uh, Marana trying to get out. Gets hit by that dagger. Now here comes the, the Nature's Prophet. Maybe. Could. There is a, a Ravage. He's just in meld. He knows that she's there. She uh, blinks away. So two for one with the Invoker going down. And Spectre getting closer and closer to the Radiance. Is this the big item that gets BNB back in this game? It is 10 kills each. This Juggernaut has that Battle Fury and a Blade of Alacrity. So it could be a, a Yasha that he builds into there. Or it could also be a Diffusal. I see that item more and more recently. If we take a quick look at the XP and gold, XP firmly in favor of Mineski, and the gold, I would say that is in favor of Mineski as well right now. So we'll make a go here onto the bottom tier 2 tower. It is now daytime, and the Night Stalker not as potent. They easily take care of that tower, and they could still go somewhere else. The Aegis is still on Templar, 
And now she's working towards that desolator. She's almost got it right now, too. She now has enough for it and will buy it up. Tempo Assassin pushing through that mid lane. We've got the Juggernaut getting scoured out a little bit here. We have a Spectre and a Night Stalker ready to jump on him. The Night Stalker seems to be going for an Aghanim Scepter, and the Juggernaut just go over, goes over and farms some camps. He may even go for it a little bit more. He's going to see the Spectre here, though, and he may know to back up. He goes over. He's not so scared. There's going to be a Marana ult being used. And the Spectre is going to TP out, so is the Night Stalker, and they're not able to find anything there. So it was a good usage of the ult, really stopping anything that the the Radiant could have done there. And putting them back on the defensive. Now here comes a push in through mid. Oh wow, look at the mid lane. And yep, the Spectre in trouble goes down. And now they're trying to go in on top. The Ravage is available. You've got Winter taking a Sunstrike to the face. He's turned into, into a fish. And there's the arrow going to hit onto the Invoker all the way from downtown. And there's a swap back onto the Marana, keeping her alive as Mineski, uh, Templar Assassin, on the backside, just doing so much work with that Desolator, taking out one, taking out two. The Marana arrow takes out the. Night Stalker and now lights. He's standing in the trees, looking up the sky like, why me? That's a full five-man team up with only two going down from Mineski X, and this is them taking the reins on this matchup. Jacko once again looking pretty good on his mid lane. This time it's the Templar Assassin. They will take the fifth tower of the t of the game, and they can easily go over to mid as the creeps are pushing pretty far. But they may just decide to go for the tier three right now. Jacko's just going to clear the creeps, and they. We'll go over towards that mid lane. The uh, heroes on on BNB are responding fairly soon, so this is going to have to be a fast push if they want to do it. They're backing up a little bit, and yeah, Jacko's just going to leave. Arrow comes through. Uh, it hits onto Night Stalker. Okay, and this. Tier 2 tower will indeed go down to the Marana. So that is the last tower, outer tower remaining for BNB. As their life in this SEA qualifier is getting rather low right now. Marana has finished off that mechanism. Now is trying to man fight against these uh, forged spirits. Gets spit on by the Tidehunter. And again... All right, Jacko, easy, bro. Meld strike, radio rays in trouble. Not even gonna go for a silence or anything. Just tries to run away from Jacko, but that ain't happening, son. So Jacko again with an easy kill. Thirty-six hundred gold on the bank. And we'll see what she buys. I have to stop doing that. She goes for a BKB. And this graph is starting to get out of control, going further and further in favor of Mineski. And she just continues to do damage here. Yeah, this, this Templar Assassin is absolutely out of control. She's got the BKB coming in on the courier, just sitting in the trees there, not doing too much good. She hides the, the, hide, hides the BKB for a little bit. And now we'll see if she decides to... This is this is a one-man wrecking crew, or rather a one-woman wrecking crew. This is... This is destruction of massive proportions right here. Just absolutely going through the heroes. This, the Spectre readings does end up getting finished up. So they have a way back into this. BNB &B can do something as long as the Spectre can stay alive. All of the lanes are pushed in, so they're not going to get too many objectives. They have not taken a tower at all. And we're just waiting for Mineski's next move. They are going to go for the Roshan. We do a lot against him. And this will definitely help fund their push onto the high ground. The Templar Assassin is the one that picks up the Aegis. And I just don't see a way back into this for 
for BNB. I mean, they have to, they have to get the haunt. They have to get the best ravage ever, and they need the invoker combo. That's how they get back into this game. And honestly, that's a that's a very difficult road for them, especially with the BKB on the Templar Assassin. They just have to catch her out. Same with the Juggernaut. He's going for the BKB, and that makes things very difficult for BNB. There's also a Hyperstone on the Templar Assassin. That's really scary. Still has some time left on the Aegis, but we might want to see Mineski push a little bit pretty soon. They're going to use the Marana ult as they see the Night Stalker on the top lane. Doesn't quite have that Aghanim Scepter yet. He's clearly going for the gem Aghanims. That's very standard on a Night Stalker. The arrow's going to hit, interrupting that TP and already raised. Goodbye, sir. You will be remembered as the guy that died 22 minutes into the fight against Mineski. The push continues here as they go in through top. Juggernaut's just hanging out, doing little Juggernaut things. Gonna find some creeps. I'm sure he wants creeps. Oh, he actually breaks that smoke. He breaks the smoke off of the Tide Hunter. And looking really good right now for Maneski. They get the arrow. Not gonna hit on anything. And here comes the push onto the tower. Jacko with the Desolator. Oh no, Lion! You might want to be careful. She also has a BKB still available as well as an Aegis. You may just want to kill the tower and just try to get the enemy to kill you before you use that BKB. And arrow comes through. Not gonna hit. And we'll see where the initiation comes. There's a BKB used and Jacko just walks right in. There used to be a line there, not anymore. Raider Ray's taking a lot of damage and there is the... Yeah, okay. I think that the Juggernaut was just daring them to initiate, but they end up taking the tower, and they back up. Jacko just absolutely obliterating the obliterating the lion. It's obliterating obliterating my mouth to say obliterating. It's, it's those tough words. I wish I could have the best words. In any case, the rating on the back foot. Nice Stalker has finally finished off that that Aghanim Scepter and he sees a lot here. He's got flying vision and he just on the edge of it sees the Vengeful Spirit. This is a lot of vision that he has and the gem Aghanim Scepter co counter to the Marana is pretty good but it might just be a little bit late for this match and not really the right time for it either. If that doesn't even need, even need to be talked about. This line just having such a bad time. Jacko with a moon shard, a desolator, a BKB still has that Aegis, which it will expire fairly soon. And the Juggernaut's getting the Sanjin Yasha completed on that courier. You have a Marana solo pushing the bottom lane, seeing the Radiance Middle Tower the ward with attack. that gem. Got a lot of wards for her to deward. And there's gonna be a smoke here on the Vengeful Spirit and the Marana. You don't want to swap the tide in, but you could get someone else. The tower easily going to go down to that Desolator Templar Assassin along with that Moon Shard. There's the Ravage on the two, as well as the Han. She's just going around everywhere here. She's going all over this fight using all the haunt illusions that she can. Jacko did take a lot of damage. The Aegis will expire soon, so you may want to actually just feed if you can get it off before the Aegis expires. But they're just going to go through this. Again to the high ground. BKB forward. Meldstrike going to miss. And she's very slow right now. She does end up taking the tower down, and there's the fortify. She does need to be careful. Still has the Aegis for a bit. She's going to get silenced up, miss a couple of times, Juggernaut on the front end, going to use the BKB and just rip through the entire Radiant team. And now Nature's Prophet takes a little bit of a swipe at the Tidehunter, they're going to take him out. And now turns into a Fishes and Marana, lying with the Melt Strike to the face, ends up going down once again. The Aegis does expire, but Eden in trouble, hits by an arrow, he's going to hit the Melt Strike uphill, and now Jacko, 
He takes a little bit of damage from the base. He doesn't really care at all. This is the second set of wrecks going down for Mineski. And in this best of three, they're looking pretty good to move on to the games tomorrow in the quarterfinals. They're going to go for their last tier three tower of the game. The last set of wrecks going down obscenely fast. And, I mean, just look at this graph. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look at the Templar Assassin just looking for some more kills. 20,000, 30,000. Absolutely ridiculous at 27 minutes. And now Jacko just rip ripping right through that tier 4 tower. Doesn't even care that the tower is hitting him. It doesn't matter. Tier 4 is down. And, well, that's going to be about it for BNB. They, they played fairly well, but Mineski is just such a good mechanically skilled team that this match was very difficult. Juggernaut even goes for a TP underneath the enemy's faces there. Jacko gets the Glimmer Cape from his friend, and in the end, Mineski take this win in the best of three, 2-0 against BNB. They will move on to the quarterfinals of the Epicenter Dota 2 SEA Qualifier. I'm Pythian, thanking you for watching this match, and as always, cheers.